بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أوحي إلي An interview with a gem Getting deeper into that issue Al-Imam Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziya, you know Ibn Al-Qayyim One of his books is entitled Ar-Ruh The Spirit or the Soul And that book is an exciting one. Yet the great scholar said, you're not, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. <coughs> it's not necessary that you accept everything of it and take it for granted. Because part of that book is what he collected from the Athar and the, the old books, the people of the books. Of the section which we do not deny, we neither deny nor accept. And the Prophet ﷺ didn't prohibit us from narrating things which do not contradict the Quran or the Sunnah. Why am I saying this? Because this experience of that book, which was entitled An Interview with a Muslim, a Jinni Muslim, who is a, a great friend of the one who interviewed him. And which took place in front of one of the major sheikhs in Egypt. And the guy who is well known as a Muslim journalist who behaves himself and respects his word. He's narrating his experience with that jinni who spent much time talking to him and he asked him more than a hundred questions about the life and the the jinnis worked and the guy was so frank and open to him to him that 90 percent of his questions he answered in an amazing way which gave people an indication yet i'm still saying we are no we should not take everything like 100 percent for granted he's a muslim jinni from india who is a prince amongst the jinnis and after his Islam, 10,000 of his guard, bodyguards of jinnis adopted Islam. That's to give you an idea about that type of interview. I will not take it consequently, meaning because it's too long. But what is excellent about the book is the brother is always giving evidence and proof from the book and the sunnah. And the authentic ones, the Bukhari and Muslim and the Sahih. Al Kutub al Sitta. And whatever he can't find a dalil for, he says it very clearly. That's what the jinni told me, and Allahu A'la. The jinni became, was named Abdul Hakim after his Islam. The brother here, I will not go through the, the dalail from Al Kitab and Al Sunnah because it will take a very long time. But whoever would like to benefit from that, he can, inshallah, and he is good at Arabic language, he can. Uh, we, I can photocopy that book to him, which is not sold anymore here because it's out of print. I asked the jinni Muslim, how old would the jinnis live? He said, some of them for thousands of years. Some of us live up to 3,000 years. Others live for four or five or 6,000 years. But it is rare that someone lives up to 7,000 years. As for Iblis, he has been since Allah sent Adam down and he's alive. And he has his throne somewhere on earth, on the water, in an island. And his five kids and he mentioned some names for the five kids of Iblis. The main five ones are still alive with him. I asked him, and how old are you? He paused for a while. And he was staring at me. Because one of the things, strange things which happened is, he saw him in his real shape. He was possessing one of his relatives before he became Muslim.
and he stayed in him until for those weeks until that was finished. So he stared in him as if he's seeing through my eyes into my depths, guessing what do I mean? Was trying to read something. And then I repeated the question, how old are you? He said, swear by Allah that you won't try to harm me or to hurt me. That's the jinni. I was surprised and shocked at this. I said, Uqsimu billahi al-azim la adurruk. Why should I do that? He said, I'm still young. Compared to the human being, I'm like 15 or 17 with the human rate. He said, no, I want your real age with the rate of the jinnis. He said, 180, which is, I'm in my adolescence, 180. He later explained to him that a baby jinni would nurse his mom huh, for almost 40 or 50, up to 50 years. And he's still nursing. Most of the time, a baby jinni would be asleep, not active, a baby. So 40 years? Yeah. Taking the milk of his mama, he said, milk, exactly like you, human beings, and sleeping. As for your dad, is he still alive? Because he's talked about thousands of years. He said, no, he died in a battle. He was careful, this believer, his dad which took place between him and his right hand helper whose name was Hood. And he was 1000, he was 950 years when he passed away. As for my great grandfather, he was up to the sky trying to pick up something from the angels. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a shihab on him which destroyed him and he was thousands of years old when he died I said do you know exactly how old he was he said no but he was Muammar like those extremely old very old down here everything is by evidence this yes happens in the world of jinn according to what the Quran said or what the Prophet said all that is narrated here in this new chapter of the book, I would bring some known information to the people of experience and knowledge. But still there are surprises and shocks for many people. Oh, this. Even in the American and Western world. And we might explain some of the phenomena that many people are bewildered when they think of. If we want to realize or picture or view that al jinn live in every spot of this earth and to make it closer to the mind, I would say that man lives on the dry land only, right? Except when he travels sails by boat or by plane. And the oceans and the seas cover most of our planet more than 72 percent whereas the dry land is only 28 percent or even less and the experts are telling us that the water is taking more space every every day because of the melting of the the poles which made some experts to give the, our planet the title, the water planet. Because it is, 70% of it is water. And not all the dry space left is inhabited by people. Lots of it is desert, as you all know, right? SubhanAllah. 
they occupy less than one over four of that dry land left. They mean us? Yeah. No, no, no. The human beings. Right. Go to Egypt. In Egypt, we only live on the banks of the river. In Cairo. Nile. La. <laughs> Most of Cairo is what? Deserts and mountains. But we live on the river bank. Now he moved from that to the world of the jinnis. He said, Al Jinn has got their own cities, countries, and camps. Most of it is on the water, which we do not inhabit. On the surface of the water. Suleiman used them to build him castles and palaces at the bottom and on the surface and when Balqis came from Yemen and she got into one of the palaces of Suleiman she thought it was water so she moved her dress a little bit not to get wet so he smiled and laughed and everybody in the company laughed and said it's crystal and that crystal was on the surface of the water it was so clear that she thought she's getting into water and that's in the Quran Right? قال إنه صرخ ممرد من قواريس. طيب. And he has got camps and cities at the depth of the sea. My body in scuba diver. <laughs> Have you ever got that feeling when we were at 150 or 40 feet down, and we were looking around us and not seeing my body? that there is something I did you were my body for many times and Khalifa were, was my body for many times I had this feeling especially when I get into a cave and watch for eels or stingrays there was a feeling of I'm not the only one who is giving bubbles at that place there are some, you know, sort of boom, and not fish. Subhanallah. Akhi, Allahu A'lam. But I'm telling you, we've been licensed by PADI, the American Association, for almost eight years now, or more. More than eight years, ten years almost, right? And we're both advanced divers. But we need to practice, right? This might fall, I'm, I'm afraid. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best not to no, cover it. And okay. Is that a command? Okay. He said, at the depths of the seas, oceans, and rivers, they have got kingdoms, cities, constructions. And together with the great deserts of the world, from Nevada in America, to the Sahara in Africa, to that of Asia, Siberia, full of kingdoms for the jinn. All the high mountains are their camps. All the empty places are their camps. So this planet is inhabited. Maybe there is not a span without someone, Yusabbihullah or Yahmatullah. They inhabit the caves in the mountains. Some of them do inhabit the holes. Like snakes. The holes. And the cracks. And with all this enormous presence, they are crowding us in our own homes and, and rooms, at work in the streets. So, if you can see the jinnis, you would see no free space in the whole world. If you are allowed to see the jinnis. Now we believe that they are with us. Because each one of us has got a qareen from al jinn. And a qareen, and he's, he's listening now. And he might be saying, oh, this guy got that information. But he's not that accurate in this. Maybe. Allahu A'lam. Some of them 
are permanent stayers in our houses, in our rooms, in our halls, in our yards. And some of them are devils and shayateen which inhabit our toilets and bathrooms. That's why we say, Na'udhu billahi min al-khubuthi al-khabaih. And some of them inhabit the sewage, small sewage holes. It is their home. Are they either good or bad? Or are they like... No, those inhabiting inside are the evil ones. No, I'm saying, saying, are, are, are they like people, like for example, all quote-unquote mushrik of the humans are quote-unquote evil? No. Nah. I mean, they, they're mushrik, we nah. know that. Nah. But they're not always harming Muslims like this mm -hmm. and like that. So some of them are like that also? Nah. Okay. But whoever is shaitan is no, only evil. Sir, sir. But the, because there are two types, he explained to him that jinnis and shayateen are two different types. They are made from the same fire, but the fire is like something different from the nature of the fire that shaitan is made of and the jinnis are made from. He will explain that. But when he asked him for more, he said, I can't say anymore. That's it. Tayyip. In a nutshell, they are a unique world by themselves. They feel their own world as if it is their own homes, plantation, cities, history, faith and dogmas, parties, populations, kings, universities, Hospitals and everything you imagine in your world is found in the Jinn's world. Those who live in the cities or villages or towns mostly are mostly Muslims. Whereas some of them are not. But the others who are not Muslims don't prefer to live in the cities and towns and except in the toilets and that, those places, dirty places. Christian jinnis inhabit the Christian houses, mostly. And most of the Christian jinnis are settled in the churches. They love it. The Jewish ones and with the Jewish people. And a huge number are found in Israel. Affected and affecting. So there is like interaction, you know, like a circle. The Muslim jinn is always seeking Muslim house to live in. And they seek the true Muslim practicing ones, not the ones by name, because they want to learn from them. And to be behind them in Salah, even if they're not aware. If they pray a Sunnah, you would find five, six of them or ten, a family of Muslims, jinnis, and they are exactly having a line of adults, then kids, then their females behind you, praying with you. And if you beautifully, you know, affect their, their voice, your voice of Quran, they would love you and get closer to you, never harming you. On the opposite, they try their best to defend you against any evil jinni. Yet, their percentage amongst the whole jinnis all over the world is like the percentage of the Muslims. And the practicing <coughs> ones are like the practicing ones amongst the Muslims. You'd be amazed to know that. When a, jinni, a Muslim jinni finds that those Muslims are not practicing Islam, they are Muslims by name, they are not praying, they would leave very upset and sad seek in another house which the name of Allah is mentioned sincerely in. A, a Muslim jinni is extremely sincere in his deen. And he is applying his deen extremely literally. Letter by letter. And his heart is full of iman that when he hears the Quran, he immediately tears down. 
and he has got that inhaling and exhaling loud as the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba did. And moaning and signing from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other jinn is when they hear him, they are moved to crying as well. I asked my colleague, is there any Muslim jinn in my house you can see? He said, yes. All the genies in your house are Muslims. And I'll give you two of their names. Saeed and Morjan. They are the two sons of a mother genie called Zubaida. And her husband is Muhammad, the father of the two. And they've got many kids, other kids, hanging in the roof of your room now. And they are like servants of that house. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is driving away, dismissing many of the hardships of that house because of the presence of those jinnis here. I said, don't they get tired from being hanging and sticking to the roof? He said, the whole day they are like that. Once they put the food, they get down, say bismillah and eat with you which it doesn't affect the amount of food you're eating. It increases the blessings. If you remove the food, they thank Allah SWT and get back hanging. Until the night comes, when they pray Al Isha, and they hang to the roof a little, if they feel tired, they get down and sleep on any couch, cushion, or chair in this very hall you have. But they wake up during the night for tahajjud. Pray the night. Then pray al-fajr. And when they fly around the roof, they keep remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are blessed, my dear brother. <coughs> I said, don't they leave the house for any need or travel or anything? He said, yes, they do. And they come back. Sometimes they go to Al-Haram for prayer. Either in Mecca or in Medina. And they come in a blinking of an eye. To their house. Yours. I said, May Allah subhanahu wa ta bless the house for me, my family and for them. Then he commented. He said, The presence of the jinni Muslim in a house, in a Muslim house, is a sign of goodness and a proof for blessing and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that jinni makes dua for the inhabitants that I'm used to finish Salatul Isha and go back home for some emergency which I still can remember exactly when I wanted to catch there was some emergency and I wanted to catch the jama'ah the jama'ah was done not here in Saudi Arabia it happened here once, but in Egypt, the other four or five. And I went home, I go home, and I totally forgot. Because I'm not used to praying Al-Faridah at home. So I make my wudu, brush my teeth, say my dhikr and sleep. Sometimes I sleep late. Almost one o'clock. And the Fajr is 3.30, when it is winter time, it's very early. And when I sleep late... Uh, I need at least three to four hours to wake up with the help of my family, my mom, rahimahallah, whatever. They wake me up with the adhan. But this happened. That some, something wakes me up very fresh at least 40 minutes before the adhan and fajr. And this echo is saying, Laisha, Laisha. And upon this, all those times, tears come on my cheeks there. He doesn't want Al Fajr to come without me fulfilling my duty, Al Isha. And I rush. And I make my wudu, pray my Isha, and to thank Allah, praise Him for that, whatever Allah blesses me with raka'at until the time for Adan. 
So if it if it, it didn't happen to me, I wouldn't have, you know, taken that hundred percent. But it happened. So he said they might wake you up to Salatul Fajr or Qiyamul Layl. And if your Qareen would be a Muslim, which is not so much. So don't, please don't commit sins and scare them with sins. Or else they would leave your home. And they would be upset of you because you dismissed them. And you, get, you are giving the, the space and the place for Shayateen to take their place. And if the jinni Muslim inhabits your house, the angels would be more and more and more in your home. The jinni Muslim said, I'll tell you something important you human beings are not aware of. I said, Khairan. He said, a shayateen, the devils, love to live in a stinking places. And they are much attracted to Al-Najasa. They love it. And the, the terrible and horrible smell. That's why when a shaitan hears Al-Adan, he farts. Because he loves the bad smell to cover him and run away. You studied that from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And one of the ways of healing someone possessed is to call Adan. Because this Adan is like burning him bit by bit. Repeating Al Adan and reading from Surah Al Safat, 10 ayat, and some procedure only those experienced know. So when they hear the Adan, they run away to the nearest toilet. And they put their hands on their ears not to hear the adhan or use their thobe to cover themselves some of them skip and jump in a second into the sewage holes or the sink the hole of the sink that's why if you get into dawratul miya use your left foot and say the dua before you get in warn your family and your daughters from spilling boiled water in those holes without saying bismillah if they need to for the sake of cleaning or whatever let them say bismillah first this bismillah will keep them away from the harm of the shayati because this might kill one of the jinnis or a shayateen so his family or his mom would try to revenge from the inhabitants of the house without being aware that they did it not aware but saying bismillah would put those barriers between you and them their heart especially females because she's the one who more attached to this and if they are unable to possess they won't hesitate they would do that saying bismillah and saying the dua fills in the gaps of your soul for them they can't penetrate but for getting that and getting to the toilet and having the habit of some foolish ones sing and have rock while they're taking the shower this opens the holes of your soul for the shayateen and if you're saved from a shaitan with the favor of allah you can't guarantee the continuation of that safety Beware of idols or statues or pictures hanging on the walls. But yes, of living things. He said, Alhamdulillah, I never had any of that in my house, but I had a goose, like a small goose <coughs> with its inside at like an opening a hole I make it for the garbage it was like for the garbage bin it, the garbage was designed like a goose mm -hmm. suddenly in our meeting in my meeting first meeting with that Jinni Muslim 
he was looking right and left and worried and he was looking at the ceiling and saying salam suddenly he saw that goose so he was furious with and with much care and said is it made of rubber i confirmed he said get a knife now and chop its head immediately or cover it that it wouldn't look like a goose it would look like any solid thing and then he said looked up again and said get out get out i asked him why are you shouting and saying that he said i see devils on the head of that goose In, on the spot i ran and i grabbed a piece of cloth and covered the head he breathed and said they left and he he reminded me and said aren't isn't muhammad sallallahu saying those who are min ashad nasi adaban yawm al qiyama some of those who are deserving the most torture of allah on the day of judgment are those who are making those statues and that the prophet sallallahu want to get in a house with our statues or tasawir and he reminded me of jibril not getting into the house of the prophet ﷺ once because of that incident i said how about the photographs does it affect you he said listen any photographs hanging has got some magnetism in it gravity for the shayateen it's like grabbing shayateen to it don't hang it if it is for necessity always hide it somewhere even if it is on the cover of a book or a newspaper or a magazine always turn it or cover it with something put them together and cover them don't give a shayateen any attraction to come in and tell whoever you know of the muslims just for necessity if you're forced to use those photos in your ids or whatever so i want to ask you about this magnetism you're talking about which is found in statues and photos is it true is it true magnetism or you're just making it closer to my mind he said no it's true 100 percent exactly like the magnetism which is taking you guys to the the gravity satan shaitan can smell it exactly as you smell the odors and the, the smell of anything and he sees it from far away because it's like a rays or beams it's like for you like a cloud so shaitan comes to it running as if he's coming to delicious food there was a an elephant toy for my kid and another was like a doll i said those thrown on the moquette here he said no no these are toys for kids they don't attract child here. i said why he said i don't know the reason i'm telling you what i can see but didn't aisha used to play with such a thing <laughs> and muhammad did not prohibit her from that maybe the gravity or the magnetism in it is put out by the help of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of the amusement of the kids because i don't see them attracted to that i told him please stare and gaze on those elephant and can you see the isha'at the beams and the rays like that coming from the goose he said no it's too faint very very little because kids playing with it and throwing it away are destroying much of those beams and radiation in it i said subhanallah 
Sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I said to the Jinni Muslim, oh, he said to me, don't leave, don't abandon what, any room in your house without using it, moving in it, doing something in it. Don't lock a room for a long time, and for a month or six months or so. Because if you have a bedroom and you leave it empty without remembering Allah in it or sleeping in it with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the devil prefers that place and he gets in it to sleep on that bed and he occupies that room. I said, you mean the beds in the abandoned rooms are beds for shayateen? or any abandoned bed he said both any abandoned bed a shaitan would prefer to use even if it is your bed which you used to use before and then you abandoned it hasn't muhammad sallam said if someone leaves his bed and then comes back to it it's highly recommended to clean it clean from what three times with any towel or thobe because the prophet said he doesn't know who used it after him i said so it's not condition that the room should be abandoned for a long time oh sorry <laughs> would be abandoned for a long time he said of course not but any abandoned room or abandoned bed for a long time is 100% a shaitan's place. Not only one, many. As long as if the name of Allah is not remembered in that room or on that bed. He, all, he added, there are armies for Iblis spreading everywhere called Al-Mutasakkiun. What do you call those youth in, who walk aimlessly just for fun there? youth adolescents who just walk in the streets aimlessly they don't have any aim they have a, a terminology Lascar. in english huh? those who just walk to harm people or have fun Lascar. or they have no job to do huh? in arabic we have the word mutasakka going and coming back and going and coming back for nothing he said <laughs> There are some of the shayateen who are doing that. Some of them stay in the streets for women. To beautify them in the eyes of maids. Even if she is ugly. He would always come and try to add something to her face or to her back. And pushes a believing person to look at them. And a fajr, a disobedient, would increase in that. Some of them are specialized in the lower part of a female. Would always tell her, whisper to her to keep shaking. <laughs> and that, that word in the American culture, eh? I recently started knowing that it is one of the shake and shaking and shaky. I'm, I'm like... I'm like backwarded in that, guys. Uh, I should have known that a long time ago. But nice. alhamdulillah, it's a bl blessing from Allah. Because when I keep listening to the kids singing and saying, yeah, shake and shaky. And most of your songs are like shake, shake, baby, right? Allah understand. Na'udhu billah, worse than that. I better not talk about this. And from those shayateen who is, aha, uh -huh, and he keeps beautifying, decorating that area for any looker. This guy, th those guys work day and night, non-stop, 24 hours. He only relaxes very shortly because he is addicted to that work. Most of the shayateen are more active during the night in the darkness. If Allah would have enabled you to see them, you would be amazed of the huge number by the evening, the coming of the evening. 
Some of them are specialized in harming and hurting kids. Making them fight against each other. Or pushing them towards playing in dangerous places, high places, to fall and die. Or get injured the rest of his life. Or make some of them wound the others that the adults get involved. The parents. Then, a shayateen who are, what's the terminology used? Bums. How do you spell it? B-U-M. B-U-M. Bums. A'udhu billah. B-M-W. Huh? Bums. They interfere and pour oil over that fire of fighting. And in most cases, it ends in a crime. I said, to that degree, a shaytan would use man as a plaything. Where is the mind or mentality of man? He said, a wise person who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not get involved in that. That's why the Prophet sallallahu repeated the advice, don't get angry. As shayateen are aware of this in man, this weakness. So tens or hundreds of them would gather around man in this situation and push him down to get Huh? And I see some shayateen of kids saying, fight, 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 fight. During the breaks sometimes. Mm -hmm. yes. Big ones who are 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. I'm in my office and I hear something like, you know, I open the window and I see those groups. Two are fighting and instead of separating them or helping them, the kids go fight, 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 fight until a supervisor is, runs and catches them before it's too. And I ask them, we are doing that? They love to see that fight. Of course, they are surrounded by thousands of Manarati shayateen. They must be. <laughs> Allah Mustaan. Question. Do they ever talk about different sizes? The eyes of the shayateen go this way. They are oval from top to bottom. So people make the size of their... The size of their... The size of their heads... The size of their heads compared to their bodies are bigger than the size of ours compared to our bodies. The heads. Most of their mouths are like a fish's mouth. They do have what we do have in our bodies. Heart, lungs, liver and all that. A female would get pregnant for 15 months. It's not nine like ours or seven, 15. Most of the males are bald. The females are dragging, most of the females are dragging their hair on the ground. He will describe in detail their skeleton and what is meat and flesh to them in their concept. How do their ears look like? Their noses, the tips of their noses, how do they look like? Very small and tiny. Ears are very small and tiny. Except those who come in the shape of an animal. Because some of them come in shape of animals. I don't want to burn all the cards. But let me remind you again. We are not taking everything here for granted. It's what a trusted Jinni Muslim who would weep when he hears the Quran, he accepted Islam and at the hands of that man. Egyptian, Egyptian. Muhammad Isa Dawood. And this happened with a very famous, in front of a very famous Egyptian Sheikh. You heard, you, most of you have heard about him, Sheikh Kishk. He passed away like, now, he passed away like 10 to 15 years ago. Rahmatullah. Do they look different than the Yeah, yeah. He said that he explained the difference between the jinnis and the shayateen and he said, You guys think of us as horrible shaped ones. If you would be able to see us, you would not compare what the so called beauty of human beings to out the beauty of the jinnis. He said, Some of us are marvelous in their beauty that you won't believe that they are genies. What? It's not the idea in your mind that all the genies are horrible. No. 
we're very normal and put many lines after the word normal we have very beautiful ones males and females that you're amazed if you can see us in reality shayateen are totally different they are horrible they've got two little horns here which the prophet ﷺ mentioned that the sun comes from between the two horns of Aisha. And he used the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ So he's not giving you something without reference of the Kitab and the Sunnah. I'm not a mufti of Jinni, by the way. And I want to go back home safely and go to bed, sleep safely. I don't want any one of them to. Inshallah, alhamdulillah, I'm protected. Now, now you're talking about position. And there is a whole chapter that Jinni talked to him about position and what happens exactly and the tricks played by the jinnis and the characteristics which should be found in a healer the one who tries to heal and get out the jinni exorcism from someone leave that question until we come to that chapter <laughs> but you will know you will learn many of their tricks what they do inshallah Allah musta la sometimes Sometimes the weak ones or the, those who get weak through reading Quran and Quran, Quran on them, that some of them are burnt up to half of them. And I had an experience myself with one Egyptian brother who's a half of Quran and his wife has got seven recitations of Quran. And she was possessed before she learned the Quran. Actually from the night of her wedding, and we did our best. There were four careful jinnis in her. One male and three female. And the four of them were Christians from Sinai. Alhamdulillah, by the will of Allah, we got rid of that male. The three females were fierce. But with the reading of the Quran, especially some special ayat, we will talk about that. Inshallah, and you will take their numbers and the, the chapters Alhamdulillah, two of them were dismissed and still struggling with one. Allah an yashfiha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure her. It's a very strange world. Allah an You know, you know, sometimes it paralyzes her tongue when she starts, she starts to read Ayat uh, al on herself. And she gets unconscious in seconds. So that's the power and the ability of that one left. But she's getting weaker and weaker, that genie. And I hope, inshallah, in no time, she will leave her, inshallah. I mean, is there a reason for Lots of reasons. We'll, we'll, yeah, for a position? Not possession, but for the reason that they can stand. This is rare. Yeah, and in 99% of reading special ayat on them, they can never stand it. But this is a very rare case, like a trial and imtihan from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sabr. And that Jimmy said, I don't know why, how I'm staying. Because you killed and smashed all the others. Why I'm staying, that's something I don't know. Allahu A'lam. La Iblis himself, he will mention some amazing things about Bermuda Triangle. And for Moza, amazing things that he, a shaitan, refused to tell him. But I have a feeling that there is something. He said, please don't ask me. Talked by the UFOs, yeah. that, that trick yeah. of the UFOs, and said, yeah. he said, many people think of the so-called other creatures, and most of it are done by Jimmy. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. The, the UFOs, UFOs and those vast and yeah. fast, you know, right. lights and shapes, and the, the, people the, the, witnessed and saw something in their fields. He said, that most of it are done, done by special types of jinnis and devils to scare people. But he didn't deny the possibility of having other creations on other planets. He said, I can't confirm and I can't deny. 
what I can see and what I can feel according to our ability is it is possible he said while we were discussing and we came very close to each other he usually had this sense of we were created before you mm -hmm. and I had to give him the piece of advice listen do not feel proud because it's a sin and he had to admit his mistake and ask me for forgiveness I said forgive me I was ignorant when I said that that you can't be proud of yourself because you were created before us he said alimni alimni teach me teach me some of them are experts the word ignorant which he came is ignorant of how to deal with us and treat us and one of the examples I mentioned is that guy is running thunderously and slamming a door and there was a baby Jinni sitting playing with his brother at the edge of the door they like edges and a shaitan likes to sit between the Sun and the, the, the shade that's why we are prohibited from praying half of us in the Sun or even sleeping half of us in the he gave all these deletes he said I can see devils and shayateen now he's relaxing half of him in Sun and half of him in the shade don't do like them if he slams the door and he kills any of those babies the mother does not think the same way we think she wants the revenge here some of them for 25 years and some of them the whole life when a person dies his Karim doesn't die and one of the big surprises he mentioned here is the Karim of the Prophet ﷺ is still alive and he's given durus in al baqia area to the jinnis you can't get a space to get to him to learn and any jinni who embraces islam the first thing he does is he goes to take knowledge at the hands of the qareen of the prophet ﷺ in al baqia area that should be exciting right same same way think of the humans you think of the jinn exactly you will find shia amongst them sufia amongst them Christians, Jews, he said all types. The Prophet ﷺ is sent to them as well. They are. I know that. How would they say that if they don't understand it? Come on, brother. Can you tell us one of the ayahs in the Quran? Sorry? As I told you, Ayatul Kursi is on the top of them. Al Fatiha, the two Mu'awwadatin, ten, ten ayat of Surah Al Safat. Maybe this is extremely hard on them. Al Safat Safa, the first ten. These are extremely hard, especially if it is read on a glass of water after when they're still trying struggling trying to stick to the you know, not leave the body if it is read as, as a final step on the glass of water and then thrown on him or even given to the sick person to drink it can destroy that jinni in the inside into pieces and it either comes 90 percent of it comes through vomiting into pieces or if not with the stool in al barr wal bahr wal jaw all the land the sea and the air there are so many types colors kinds nations and their world is like ours countries kings populations tribes princes normal people and their deans their religions are like those of the human beings some are muslims alhamdulillah and some are christians astray some are jews some are hindus some are buddhists some are atheists and some are communists and what is very wondering or wonderful is that one of those communist jinnis he was preparing studies 
in the communist thinking and ideas and theology, debating and protecting it, defending it. And I don't know if it is for his fortune or un he was unfortunate or fortunate that I never met with him or answered him. I was not there when he was debating with the rest of the jinn. He might have surrendered his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the one who gave me his piece of news is my friend, the jinni Muslim. I asked my friend, is Iblis the son, the, the father of jinn in general, like Adam, who was the father of the human beings? He said, no, no. Iblis is part of al jinn, but he's not the father of al jinn. I said, then what's the name of the father of al jinn? He said, the knowledge I have received or got, Allahu A'lam, is his name is Jan. I said, what about Iblis? May Allah curse him. He said, he's one of the children of al Jan or Jan. He was excellent in his deeds, likening himself to the angels. And after that, he became bad and felt proud as it is known to all of us Muslims in his saying. And the jinni narrated the ayah, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمِ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ That's of Surah Al-Kahf. Then I said, many people do believe that Iblis is the father of the jinn. He said, and what is their dalil for that? What's their evidence or knowledge? Al-Quran never said that. Muhammad Sallallahu never said that. Anyways, he is the father of shayateen. I said, so can you tell me the difference between a jinni and a shaitan? I know some of you are excited now, guys. He said, a shaitan is jinni, but not every jinni is shaitan. Shaitan is from the jinn, but not every jinn is shaitan. He said, can you clarify that more? Because I'm thinking of writing a book and telling my brothers, the human, what you're saying now. He said, it's simple. Iblis married a jinniya, a female jinni who believed in him and his ideas. And they have offsprings, durriya. All their offsprings are called shayateen. And they have different shapes and most of them are maskh. Maskh is the when some someone is like distorted, distortion, distorted like a monster. What do you call this? If someone th those who come in the movies in very scary, nah, disfigured like dogs, and they have got camps and cities, mostly in the deserts, in the mountains and the abandoned and very far away islands and on the surface of the water of the sea. After my Islam and still the jinni is talking, then I'm grateful to Allah then to Ismail, your cousin, who was possessed by him, by that jinni. I can say that whoever is not Muslim and does not apply Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands and what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa wrote is a shaitan. No matter how good looking he is. From the jinni or from amongst you, human. And in this case, Iblis is considered the father of both, even of you, human, if you're not believing. And he's the spiritual father for all. You might be amazed if I tell you that Iblis is the Za'im, the leader, the father, and the ilah, the God for all the non-Muslim jinnis. They all work under his flag. And every one of them is satisfied or happy with whatever asalib or ways of life they're leading. I said, explain more. He said, I can't say anymore. Maybe later.
Suddenly the jinni Muslim said, but let me tell you something. Iblis has got a huge kingdom, ministers, a government, big administrations, representatives that are huge. Five of them, you've got to know them and warn yourself and others from. The first one, his name is Sabar. Sabar with that. And he's the one who would come to anyone in hardship, anyone who lost a member of the family, like a mother losing her son or whatever. So he would whisper to her or to him to slap his face and reject the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And maybe he took that name from Yad'u Thubura in the Quran. Yad'u Thubura, the one who slaps the face and screams because of the musibah, the hardship. And he is the one who puts on the tongues of those who are in hardship the words of rejection, dissatisfaction, and not accepting the qada of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his qadr. The second one is Dasim. Still, the brother here is saying, I'm telling you according to the pronunciation of the jinni. Dasim. And he is the one who does his effort, exerts his effort to destroy families and make wives hated, especially righteous ones, to their husbands until the husbands divorce them. And he is the most beloved kid of Iblis to his heart in his big administration. The third one is Al-A'war, the one-eyed. And he is the one who facilitates a zina, adultery, and keeps pushing people towards it. And he sends his own kids decorating and ornamenting the lower part of any woman coming outside in the street not covered properly and you guys have got so many of the, those women who are called muslims these days doing that the fourth one is called maswat and he is the one who teaches people telling lies And he can come in the shape of a man, sits in a meeting or a gathering, spreads rumor and lies. He has a comment down here, maybe referring to uh, shaitan himself attending the people of Quraysh when they decided to kill the Prophet in the shape of an old man. The fifth one is Zalambur or Zalnabur and he's the one who is responsible for fairs and markets all over the world himself Zalnabur Ya Allah understand all over the world himself and his kids his offsprings they are the main reason for deceit of the businessmen buyer and seller fighting in the aswaq and all sort of evil corruption happening in that's why we are asked required to say isti'adha when we get in a market or a fear i surprised him by saying i want you to tell me something new which i don't know i have read such a thing before i know that he said no problem i can narrate you tens or even thousands of names of the helpers of shaitan in his administration but this is not so important the most important is tell the people and remind yourself of keeping seeking refuge with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from them from their whisper from their evil i asked him are all these five still alive you talked about since Mujahid, 
the, one of the main interpreters of the Quran, you usually read Qatada, Dahak, and Mujahid, one of the students of Ibn Abbas. Talked about them more than 1,300 years ago in the Tafsir, and everything is in the footnotes here. He brings the reference of Al Bukhari, Muslim, or Tafsir Ibn Kathir. The name of that Jinni Muslim is Ibn Kanjur. As I told you, he's from India. And he was not Muslim before he became Muslim. He was Hindu. And he's a prince amongst the Jinn. And his followers are thousands. Ten thousands of them adopted Islam at his hands after he became Muslim. And he's guarded by them. He's like an Amir, a prince. Ibn Kanjur. He answered saying, yes, yes, they are still alive. The dinni is Muammar. I told you before that most of us live for hundreds of years and some live for thousands of years. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Then we talked about the jinn is living. Oh, sorry. The jinn is living in his house when he asked him, can you see any jinn is living in my house here? And he told him about those hanging. Do you remember names? Who still can remember their names? Muhammad. Saeed, Murjan, and Zubaydah. Allahu Alam, the good ones in your house, what they are called. But they like the reading of Quran and the Salah. And they do their best to protect the inhabitants of the house from the evil ones. The shayateen, the satans of Ramstein, stinking places. So the Jinni Muslim was saying, and some of the Satans, Shayateen, are like groups and camps. Some of them are specialized in living in stinking places, very stinking places. He said, I want clarification. He said, some of the Shayateen live in the vaginas of the prostitutes and the adulterers. So this would make it easy for him to push her towards working 24 hours and for whoever sleeps with her. So whoever sleeps with her would come back and come back and come back because of that shaitan who gives him a special feeling. He's living inside. I said, are you kidding? Is that true or whispering? I, I mean, living in the womb? He said, Haqiqa, Uqsimu Billahi al -Azim. So many shayateen and jinni confessed to me after they became Muslims that they are coming out from the womb of such female or from the vagina of such female. And then he continued, some of them live in the anus of the female or the male who are homo to make it like, lovable to them, that activity, and making it easier, the, I uh, know the, the terminology for that, uh, sodomy, sodomy. Eh? and some of them live in the uh, lesbians, vaginas, that they become addicted to those activities. Some of them live in the place where the cows and the animals are slaughtered. They love the blood and the stinking blood and whatever is left in the slaughterhouse. Others live in the prostitution houses. They take it like a base, taken off from that base. That whoever go and visit that those places would always love to come back, come back because of the effect of those shayateen, not mainly that lady. And they whispered to him to bring more of his friends next time. As for the nightclub, so what you guys call as disco, is that right? He said, yes. He said, it's the place and the house of thousands of shayateen. And most of the position cases take place in those places. When they dance and they're crazy with that. And that music, subhanAllah, the, the metallic or the... Some of the types of these music turn people into really real madness. That 
I read about an American mother who killed her own son, who was five years old, sitting at the table because she was just yani, into the heat of dancing that she picked up the, the knife and she was not aware what she was doing. And she killed him. After that, she regretted that much. And she wanted even to commit suicide. But someone stopped her at the last second. So, Allahumma sta'a'a. billah. So, many of the cases of position takes place in those nightclubs. Because Satans love that type of music and singing. And they adore and worship dancing. Dancing to the shayateen is their god. They worship it. He said here, You can never imagine how much they do love dancing. And still some people are spreading that among Muslims saying, Innocent dance. I said, is this in the Muslim land or uh, uh, non-Muslim land? He said, Yes, the shayateen wish man to die and be destroyed at any way. And they know that these homo practices are causing destructive diseases, destroying diseases. And Iblis is always teaching them that a Christian or a Jew or a communist can become Muslim at any second because of that vast spread of Islam. So... Try your best to kill him before he does that through pushing him towards committing those. And the biggest number you try to do that for the sake of not giving him a chance to think about Islam in the future. So, not, not, a, uh, not a single prostitution house in America or Europe without shayateen nesting in it. The khammarat, the pubs, and the factories, the, the, the wine factories, all of them are castles for shayateen. And the non-Muslim jinni, they adore khamr wine, its smell, and especially the stinking smell of al khamr. UFOs. UFO. He, I said to him, he became, his name became Mustafa Kangur, that's the jinni. Mustafa, let me tell you some of the stories which many people confirm it's real for some strange things they saw or experienced about UFOs. And I'll show you some pictures which were taken by some of them. And I want you to tell me what you think. He said, whatever I know, I'll tell you. He said, one American said that an American guy said that he saw a very strange uh, thing, body or shape, based on six legs. And he saw some human-like creatures picking up special flowers from his farm, garden, while he was hiding behind the great trees, his great trees. And he was like, very upset seeing those who were careless stealing his stuff. So he didn't stand that and he came from behind the, the grapes to run towards them thinking that they were normal thieves. But when his name is Mass, that's the name of the man. Mass, Mass, M-A-S-S. <coughs> When he was only about 10 meters away from them, one of them immediately turned. And he had something like a remote control in his hand, in his right hand. He directed that jihaz to him and then put it back in a container which was hanging on his left shoulder. At this moment, at this second, mass felt paralyzed, rigid. He couldn't eat, move his head, neither his head nor his hands, and he didn't feel anything. And after this took place, Mass described those creatures as very short ones, dwarves. 
120 centimeters long which is divided by inches you would talk about like 40 inches the head is so big which does not doesn't have the you know any relation with the body in the size it's huge and the head is immediately on that on the shoulders without a neck there was no neck mass also mentioned that they got hair in their head and the mouth was like just a, a small hole all that is the, the brother is describing to the jinni and the jinni is listening and the eyes they look like man's eyes but without eyebrows and their skin huh? eyebrows and the skin is so soft it, it looks like glass so soft and the color is like those who are middle Europeans in the middle part of Middle East of Europe the width of the two shoulders are a little bit more than the width of the head a little bit mass noticed that those two who turned to him one after one they have got two arms and two legs but he couldn't see any hands and or fingers or even toes and they were wearing vague clothing like one piece sticking to their bodies on the right side of them there was like a small container and another bigger on the left side mass said those two particular ones went back to the remote control or that set which was two meters and a half high meaning double size any one of them and they kept looking at mass from the top of that flying thing it, it looked like glass there was a door sliding like an a hydraulic from bottom to top then all their legs disappeared and there was like a, a silent explosion and without any noise that thing moved up and when it came about 30 meters high times three that's 90 feet 100 feet it disappeared immediately without showing any direction it went to as if it was a light which was put out the jinni looked at me and said I swear God these are jinn but they came in a bigger shape than their real shape I said where are they from he said I don't know but they might be inhabiting some regions we call them under under red sound or what is that the red rays or violet rays ultraviolet under تحت, not over over the over the uh, clouds or they might be inhabiting the depths of the oceans from the inhabitants of those he said now i'll show you the picture of what uh, a lady called Axia sent by a lady called Axia and it was some special stamps which are weird and strange pregnancy and delivery for the jinn he said the life of the jinn is close to our life of human there is love hatred agreement disagreement and so on but their weddings are different their weddings are different even in the in how much they cost between a, a class and a class a different class family to another family city to a city a country to a country you came with the wedding here and even their meeting or sleeping together is like us but what fits their tiny sizes and it's got sperm lust deep love feelings I'm telling you 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 we Jinni are very close to you in all these 
the wedding night with the jinnies are like that for, for the NC. They are alone by themselves, husband and wife. And she's not virgin anymore that night because she was virgin before. And that honor in our society as jinnis is as great, if not more, as it is considered in you, human beings. How old are usually the jinnis when they get married? He's a journalist. <laughs> he knows what to ask. He said immediately after, other, I mean, reaching the age of puberty. But most of the jinn do marry at the age of 170 or 180. He himself is 180. He's a, an adolescent. Until the age of 200, up to 150, this is the normal range of their marriage. Whoever is more than that, like 300, is like a guy amongst you who is in his 40s, early 40s. And he's intending to marry. Isn't that something yani, not familiar in your societies? Especially the Muslim ones, someone who is, has reached 40 and is not married yet. I said, as for pregnancy and delivery, does it have any pain with your females? I would not say I would stop here. No, no, I know. He said yes. Because it's creation coming out from the womb of another creation. I mean a son from a mother. Actually, the suffering of a female jinni is more than the suffering of an, a female human. I said, why? He said, because the time of pregnancy is not six to nine months as you have. It's 15 months. And then after that, that process of pain for delivery starts, which is sometimes extreme. You have to know that in one pregnancy, the kids are from seven to nine, not one. And sometimes an exception happens and she is pregnant in 12. A mixture of males and females. I said, and does she nurse her kids? Female, uh, a baby jinni would take the age of a life of one of you. How old a human being lives normally. Yeah, the years he's taken milk. He said, the baby jinnis, jinni stays without moving much or talking much for a very long time. And most of the time, 90% of the time, he's asleep. I said, and after that, he said, normal. He grows up, learns, he gets to schools universities exactly like yours but we have we are high tech and our knowledge is fitting our life some of us learn medicine others learn architecture others learn journalism and arts exactly like you but whatever fits our own life can adultery take place between shayateen and ins and human? And I mentioned to him the hadith of the Prophet If a, a husband sleeps with his wife and he doesn't mention the name of Allah, a jinn will cling on his organ and he would do the action with him. He said, this is true, but it's a warning, prophetic warning to every Muslim that he has got to cover himself from the jinnis and the shayateen with the name of Allah. You have to say, Bismillah. And he mentioned the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Allahumma jannibna shaytan wa jannib shaytan Because any shaytan or corrupt jinn attending that, the name of Allah, would make a veil between him and the two. If not, he will 
participate with the human male and he will E-J-A-C-U-L-A-T-E with him. But this will destroy the sperm of the human being if it mixes with the sperm of shaitan. And this is one of the main reasons for abortion in you, human. It's intermingling with our world, but there, are, as he said, there are barriers between us and them. Especially with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that splits everybody on his own affairs. He's watching you and seeing what you're doing, but he's not able to affect you if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you dhikr the remembrance. If you don't, not necessarily he affects you, but you are at the risk of being affected by him, especially the bad ones. The bad jinnis, corrupt jinnis, all the shayateen who are all bad. That's what he explains. So that intermingling between the worlds show us how weak we are and how little we are compared to those jinnis that a female would have 12 in one pregnancy, probably. No, but that's the normal life. She's not the only one. Suckling seven is like a, a human suckling one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who ordained that on them, if this is 100% true, so Allah, you know, whatever the guy has, has got, you know, Quran and Sunnah for it. And whatever it does not contradict, I cannot deny it or be life and I cannot take it for granted. He looked like human to the guy until he, he came closer. He, he thought that they might be wearing something to hide. Until they turned, he, he found the reality now and that effect of that thing, as Mass was saying, paralyzed him in his place until they left. But he, he watched everything until they left without being able to react or scream or run until they disappeared. He narrated that and he mentioned three other incidents which someone took uh, a, you know, a picture and he showed it to the jinni and the jinni said, oh, These are jinnis. Now, these are jinnis, I know these. These are jinnis and I've seen some of them before. Normal activity. Actually, they fear us. They fear us, especially the one who carries Quran. Reads Quran. Uh, uh, the, the ulama talked about that and said the running of the shaitan in the, the blood here resembles his effect on the ones who doesn't mention Allah. Because the rest of the hadith is saying that if he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his way in that blood is blocked, so he's out. But he's not possessing, that's a different thing. Yeah. I mean, we don't know. I mean, this is the Adam of the Jinn. They have their own world. And we don't know what causes the uh, interaction. But we do know how to protect ourselves. But, yeah, we know how to protect ourselves. But yeah. we can't. I'm, my, my thing is that to try to logically. No, it's hard. To logically try to come to yeah. some logical conclusion. He came to that conclusion saying that you are a different nature. Right. Yeah. And hear us, Innahu Yarakum, the ayah is very clear. Innahu Yarakum, Huwa Wa Kabiluhu, Min Haithu La Tarawnahum. Ma'ana Gullak. وليش أبو هريرة شاف الجني يعني ابن الله سبحانه وتعالى في أحوال أحيان قليلة جدا لحكمة يعلمها الله سبحانه وتعالى Why did that mass see the jinni? I said and why did Abu هريرة see the jinni? Allah سبحانه وتعالى might allow it in rare cases or some cases Yeah we don't know But then again Allah subhanahu وتعالى is the way I see it, we should treat these things, these things as a big neutral, a big, and a, a, a encouragement to, to seek refuge with no. what the Prophet has, has taught us. You know. This is the, this is the real benefit, not to try to figure out what they do get twenty five breaths. You can't. It's or, not or, easy. Or, or do they or do they run and jump like we do? That's not the point. We mm -hmm. know we know certain things like they affect us. They can't have an effect on us. If Allah wills, if, if Allah wills, and we can have an effect on them. 
And they can do some bad things. If you can kill them unaware, so you have an effect on and them. They, and, they, and they, you know, they have armies, and that they, you know, that they're against us. So they, they, you know, the, the shell thing, of course. These are the things that we need to benefit from. You know, not so much as clinging to, you know, how many I got hanging from my ceiling or things like that. This not, the point is that it should encourage, I mean, it should make us re aware of the reality of the world of the I think, they, of this. I think one of the things, especially, is do they have a, a whisper saying to them as well? Oh, oh, oh. No, they do. La, Karin, la. No, no, if you no. mean a, a whisper or a whisperer, la, he didn't say that. He didn't mention that. No, yeah, they might have. You guys mentioned like how you know when we did like I mean, you know, in contact with in contact with the rest of the gym. How did he come? Uh, he's, he mentioned that at the introduction of the book and said. Forgive me from giving you the details. I can't. But he was he was possessing his cousin uh, uh, Ismail, and that journalist was very much interested in the topic of jinn many years before, and he had many researches in that field and read too much about it until he managed dealing with his cousin who was possessed, and he gave da'wah to that jinni. And so when he talked to him until he embraced Islam at his hands. And after embracing Islam at his hands, they agreed that he won't harm the other one on condition he finishes with him that type of interview because they became good friends. He said, apart from that, I can't tell you any more details because I keep it for myself. If you want to believe it, believe it. If you don't, you don't have to. That's what he said. Hubbub. The case, the case he mentioned here, this would be very rare, but the case he mentioned here is the, what you call the spirit, bring, bringing spirits or dead of the dead ones, what is it, what's the terminology for it in English? Yeah, I mean, you want to get your great grandfather, uh -huh. they, the Karin of them, their Karin, actually the one who brings them forth has got his own Karin having some agreement with the Karin of the dead ones who used to live with the grandma all her life. And then the grandma passed away, he didn't pass away because he lives for hundreds of years or even thousands of years. So some of them can have some business or agreement satisfied or being even, even bribed by that jinni or Karin to get that information or to come in the shape looking like the grandma and using her own voice, which some of the little kids were familiar with, they know it. Huh? Because the, the, the grandma, he died, passed away when that boy was 10 or 11. He still can recognize her voice when she used to talk to him when she was alive. So for some reason, if he can bring that forth for, to steal the money or get some money from him, he would put on his tongue things he wants the, 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 the guy to pay for the soothsayer or the black magic practitioner. Most of it is what? Nasp, just absorbing the money of the people through these filthy ways. But it's not really the grandma, it's the Karin of the grandma who knows all the details of her life because he was with her or she was with her. Allah Allah. We read about Jesus Isa alayhi salam coming to a possessed person uh, and he ordered the demon to come out. And the demon came out, that's in the Bible. And then that demon possessed a, a herd of swine, which became mad on the spot and rushed towards the river and committed suicide and died. This sign found and mentioned in the Bible, together with the very famous saying of Isa that there would be coming some people who pretend they can do such and such and that. They are Sahara, they are liars. Not everybody bringing something strange on his hand is a miracle or he can pretend he's a prophet. This is another clear saying in the Bible that Isa was warning against those who use jinnies or black magic to fascinate people and try to persuade Isa salam, in the Bible. So there are many signs found in the Bible and in the Old Testament about that. Uh, he answered that question, he was asked about that and he said still if the jinnies can come in the shape of a human being and he said don't think that this is easy. 
one of the hardest things on for any genie is changing changing his form because this would mean sometimes dying for him and he would be at the risk of being killed at any time if the, if the human realizes what happened yeah? and he might not be able to get back it's not an easy thing like pressing a button he said it's extremely hard and it's like you know someone you're skinning someone taking the skin of someone he said it would happen but with very very few number of dhimmis and shayateen especially those Allah gave them married married the word married is very special powers to do that yet they suffer and they're like exhausted as it's giving out their souls when they change and if they do it they never do it yani, mostly or as a habit or tradition maybe once in their life that very few number uh, if there is familiar dealing with jinnis with magic yes he said something like that if a black magic practitioner is so close and deep and devoting himself to that shaitan a shaitan can appear to him in his real shape sometimes he said so so if that relative was a non-muslim a muslim that's a different case allahu a'lam i can't i can't give fatwa about that